In this video, we'll use three steps to sketch to graph a pretty basic cosine graph. We're looking at the equation y equals cosine of x over 2. So here's our method outline, and we've got our grid set up. Now, don't be intimidated by that x over 2. Let's take a quick second to rewrite that so that we can clearly see our a and b that we'll need for step one. So we know this method is for the general form equation a cosine bx. And our equation is pretty much in that form, but I think it helps a lot of people to rewrite this as y equals cosine of 1 half times x. And that just makes sure that you really clearly see that b is 1 half. All right, so let's jump in. Step one, identify a and b first. So we see a is an understood 1 out front, so our amplitude is 1. That's our distance from midline to either maximum or minimum. And then B is going to be 1 half. So B tells us a couple of important things. First of all, it tells us how many cycles should happen for our equation between 0 and 2 pi. So in this case, we have half a cycle that should happen between 0 and 2 pi. Our graph is being horizontally stretched out from the parent graph, y equals cosine x. So that's just another way to think about it. Okay, b also helps us find the period, and we calculate the period by taking 2 pi and dividing by b. So we'll have 2 pi divided by 1 half, which means multiply by its reciprocal. Okay, so our period here is going to be 4 pi. And that should make sense with that concept of being horizontally stretched. Um, normally, for just regular y equals cosine x, a period, which is the horizontal length of a cycle, only takes 2 pi to complete. So we've stretched that out by a factor of 2. Our new period is 4 pi. All right, and the last thing we want to do to get everything set up is choose scale labels. So with this method, I think the best thing to do when choosing a horizontal scale label is take the period and divide by 4. This will ensure that all your key points in the next step align with your horizontal tick marks. Okay, you can do it many, many different ways. You could choose really any scale you wanted, but why make it more difficult on yourself? Take your period, divide by 4, use that as your horizontal scale label. So our period is 4 pi divided by 4. We will count by pi to label our horizontal tick marks. The vertical scale is usually very easy. If you just use A, uh, you should be on the right track. All right, so let's label. We'll start with our horizontal labels. So we're just counting by pi. So 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. It's just as easy as counting, but we are just adding pi on, or not adding it, but tacking it onto those numbers. Okay, so you can go all the way there. And then on the other side, we have just the negative of those same values. All right. So we'll enjoy how easy this labeling is. Back to counting like we used to. All right. And we've got our horizontal axis labeled now. So let's count by ones to label our vertical axis. And we are all set up. Now we can move to step two. Let's plot our key points. So our cosine pattern, our original cosine pattern is always maximum zero, minimum zero. Okay, a negative out front would flip that. We don't have a negative out front, so we will stick with that original pattern. And again, this works for your unshifted graphs, and that's what we have here. So we will start with our maximum. Look to A, that'll tell you the Y coordinate for your maximum and it'll be on the y-axis. So we start at 0, 1. So we have maximum. Here's where the scale labels will really pay off. All your key points in this pattern should line up with your tick marks because you've designed it that way. All right, so we have maximum that we already graphed, a 0, a minimum, which will just have the opposite value of a as its y-coordinate, and then another 0. And then we know we would repeat. I like to go ahead and put that first point just so I know how to finish drawing my cosine curve. Um, 
Those are our key points. We can move into step three, sketch and repeat. So we sketch our characteristic cosine curve and we've got one cycle. And so you see that this cycle matches with the period. That fourth tick mark should always be that period value. Um, the length of a horizontal cycle is four pi. All right, so we can repeat now. So we just do the pattern over and over again in groups of four. We have maximum, zero, minimum, zero. And then you'd repeat. So I'll go ahead and put that repeat point there. You've got another cycle. Um, let's move, so again in groups of four, so we can start another cycle at negative eight pi, because that's eight tick marks away from the origin. So we have maximum, zero, minimum, zero. You see how repetitive this is. Trig functions are great like that. Once you've got one cycle, you've really got it all. Max, zero, min, zero, and we connect to our original cycle. All right. So we've got a really nice looking graph for y equals cosine x over two. And one final note before we finish up, let's go back to B. Remember, it helped us find the period, but it also told us that half a cycle should happen between zero and two pi. It's just something to keep in the back of your mind because once you have your finished graph, you can look and see, okay, so between zero and two pi, we have a quarter cycle, a half cycle. So you should feel even more confident about your graph now because you see that half a cycle is happening between zero and two pi. So that was another three steps to sketch, this time for y equals cosine of x over two.